Hi, I'm John Paul of the blogpermentor.com. In this video, I will give you an overview of all the messages exchanged in the SEPA Direct Debit Core and B2B schemes. SDD Core and SDD B2B are two different schemes, but fortunately, the messages exchanged in both are the same. Why is it interesting to get an overview of all the messages? Simply because when you work on a project, having this big picture is helpful to understand the scope and what you are doing. In your project, you may work on all the messages or only on a subset of the messages. When you have the big picture in mind, things become easier to understand. So watch this presentation until the end. First, we'll talk about the SDD core and B2B documents, where we find the messages. The four corner model of the SDD core and B2B will be considered the four corner model is of interest here because it allows us to see clearly the spaces where the different messages are exchanged and the parties that exchange them. We list all the messages provided in the SDD core and B2B implementation guidelines. Many people stop here and that's already good, but as we will see, it is not sufficient. There are other messages not mentioned in the SDD core and B2B implementation guidelines but that banks send to their customers. These messages are used for the customer reporting and provided in a specific document that I will reveal to you. In each SDD scheme, there are three main documents, the rule book and the implementation guidelines. The scheme rules are described in the rule book and the message exchange in the scheme are defined and presented in the implementation guidelines. It is important to understand that the implementation guidelines themselves are based on the standard ISO 2022. We will get back to this crucial point in future videos. The picture depicted here is the four corner model for the SEPA direct debit, no matter if core or B2B scheme. The two different spaces where the messages are exchanged. We have here the customer to bank space, and here, the interbank space. I made a video a few weeks back to explain what customer to bank space and interbank space are. Check it out on the channel if you want to learn more about this topic. Implementation guidelines are split in two documents according to these two spaces. We have the customer to bank implementation guidelines and the interbank implementation guidelines. Let's go online and search for this document. So how do we find them? To find those documents, pretty easy. Just make a search SEPA Direct Debit Implementation Guidelines on Google. Once you have done that, you will reach to this page. And the first link is the SDD Core Rulebook and Implementation Guidelines. Just click on it. There are a lot of interesting information on this page. The first thing we find here, the SDD Core Scheme Rulebook currently in effect. So this is the rule book that is currently in effect, but below we find the implementation guidelines. So these are also implementation guidelines that are currently in effect. If we move down the page, we find, and this is pretty interesting, the main changes between this rule book and the previous one, or between this version and the previous one. So pretty interesting to understand what change between the two. And when we move further down, we see this is the latest rule book published by the European Payment Council. So they call it 2019. I was expecting to see 2018 SD core rule book, but they call it 2019, you know. So we are jumping from 2017, from the 2017 rule book that you find here, directly to the 2019 rule book. Maybe uh, they are indirectly telling us that there is not going to be a rule book next year. I don't know. But anyway, this is the latest version of the rule book that uh, uh, was published by the EPC. And right after that, you can see the main changes introduced in this rule book, of course, compare to the previous version. and. Finally, 
we find other useful documents for the SD call scheme implementation. So if you are working on a SEPA project, I really recommend you to read, to go through these documents. They are pretty helpful to understand few things. We will get back to this specific document, re recommendation on customer reporting for the SCT and the SDD. Now we want to see the content of the implementation guidelines since we are, since we are interested in the messages that are mentioned in those documents. So we need to download them and read and just, you know, go through them. I have done that. And here are the two implementation guidelines, the customer to bank and the interbank. So if we open them in the table of contents, we can find all the messages that are listed in this document. Same thing for the interbank implementation guideline. So if we go back to the customer to bank implementation guideline, we see that we have three messages here, the pane 8, the pane 7, and the pane 2. And in the interbank implementation guidelines, we have four messages, the PAX 3, the PAX 4, the PAX 2, and the PAX 7. I have put all the messages in this picture where we see the customer to bank space and the interbank space. So here's the result. Let's take the customer to bank implementation guidelines. So we found these three messages in that document. The pain 8 version 2 is sent by the creditor to its bank. That's why it is called customer to bank direct debit initiation. The pain 2 here, the pain 2 message is sent by the bank to its customer, the creditor. That is why it is called bank to customer payment status report or simply bank to customer PSR. And finally, we have the pain seven. The pain seven version two here is sent by the creditor to his bank and therefore the name customer to bank payment reversal. In the interbank implementation guidelines, we saw four messages. And those four messages are also on this picture. You can see these messages between the creditor bank and the debtor bank. In the middle here, in the middle, I've inserted the clearing and settlement mechanism or CSM. I did it to make you aware that messages generally go through a CSM. CSM play a crucial role and have a huge impact in the interbank space. They usually require banks to send and receive additional messages found in their own specifications documents. And if additional messages are required, it's obviously because the scheme messages are not enough to fulfill the CSM needs. Now, if we look at the message exchange here, so we have the PAX 3 version 2, and that message is used to exchange direct debit instruction between banks directly or through a CSM. The PAX 2 version 3 is the reject SDD. It is used either by the CSM or by the debtor bank to inform the creditor bank about rejections of PAX 3 messages that they send. The PAX 4 coming after that is used to return or refund a direct debit. The result is that funds debited after processing the PAX 3 are given back to the debtor. So taken from the creditor. Finally, we have the PAX 7. It is used to reverse funds that were debited in the interbank space. The PAX 7 can be initiated alone or as a result of a pain 7 processing. The creditor used that message to give the money back. The creditor account is therefore debited and the debtor account is credited. We look at individual messages in future videos. With this overview, we made a good progress, but we are not there yet. Customer reporting messages are still missing. And we find those messages in a document called Recommendation on Customer Reporting for the SCT and SDD. All the messages specified here move in the same direction from the bank to its customer. That is why they are called customer reporting messages. We have the CAM52 called account report. The CAM52 is equivalent to the MT942 in the SWIFT 
world. So it is an, inter an interim balance report. Then we have the CAM 53. That's the account statement. So it's like the MT940 in the SWIFT world or 950, but more, you know, close to the 940 because it contains a lot of information. And finally, we have the CAM 54. That's a, a debit credit notification. These messages can be sent either by the creditor bank to its customer or by the debtor bank to its customer, as you can see on the picture. Now we have the complete overview of the messages mentioned in the EPC documents. I really want to insist on this point. The messages we are talking about here are messages that we find in the EPC documents. You may find additional messages in your own project that do not belong to this list. These messages are then used to provide additional services either in the customer to bank space or in the interbank space. So you just need to be aware of it. Usually those messages are also uh, based on the ISO 2022. There are messages available in the ISO 2022 standards, but that are not used in the SEPA direct debit schemes, but that banks uh, are processing for their customers or that are processed in the interbank space for additional services. Great. That's the end of this presentation. It was a bit long, but I think it is important to go through all that. If you have any question, just post a comment below the video. If you found the presentation useful, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also go to permantor.com and subscribe to the newsletter to receive regular updates about articles and video. Take care and see you soon on the channel.